You know it's going to be a good day when we start off with brand new footage of the all-new Zelda game. That's right. We have 25 seconds of all-new footage for Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. And my, oh my, oh my, am I really anticipating this game and needed to get this video out to you ASAP. Now, this footage just come courtesy of Nintendo themselves, particularly the Nintendo UK over on Twitter. Now, the first time that I end up playing this footage for you, it does have sound. So I want you guys to obviously be able to listen to these sounds of the game, the music, stuff like that, because that's really excited, uninterrupted. And then we'll go through it again a bit slower, uh, just seeing what we observe and just, I don't know, me just talking about how I feel about this particular footage for Echoes of Wisdom. Now, before we dive in, just want to remind you, we are on our road to 150,000 subscribers. I'd appreciate if you would subscribe to the channel. You know what? Why don't you kill that like button, everyone? If we get this thing to 1,000 likes, you'll unlock something tomorrow. And uh, I want it to be a surprise. So let's see let's see if we can make it happen all right so let's go ahead and head on over here to nintendo uk and you know what let's full screen this bad boy and give you guys the full audio experience All right, so, uh, you know, what's obvious here, of course, is that uh, the music sounds really good. So each area is going to have, like, its own theme music, which is really, really awesome. Uh, there's a little musical elements going on here. You see the the frog here, you know, kind of singing or croaking. Uh, I really want, you know, really curious what happens when we go up to them and talk to them. And if there's more musical elements involved, obviously we have those shiny mushrooms as well that we don't quite know what they're called in this game because, obviously, uh, this is a new game with, you know, its own plants, its own fauna. Now, this shot is something we've seen already with those uh, uh, piranha fish in the background that we know you can eventually make echoes of. I'm curious if we can make echoes of a frog. I don't really know what the purpose of making an echo of a frog would be, but, you know, it would be pretty fun. Uh, but then we get to this, uh, where we've seen this shot as well with the birds, but there's new shots in this, which is exciting. Like this right here is an all new shot. You see here with the totems of the Deku scrubs. Uh, and then over here, there's a shop. And this is like a smoothie shop, right? You see the, the top there. So this is probably in the, the Faron Wetlands, the smoothie shop location. Pretty sure that there's a smoothie shop location in every area. And we have a sign here that, you know, who knows what it means. If it's just telling you smoothie shop this way or... Or whatever. Um, but as you continue here, you see a Deku scrub right outside the smoothie shop. So that's pretty cool. Um, and over here, oh, right before the end, you see another sign. Uh, right. Oh, I can't quite get this not Right there. Another sign with some runes. Uh, which runes are pretty typical in the Feral Wetlands and Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. And runes appear to be here as well. Here we see one of the warp locations, Deku Scrub here. We've seen this before with the purple pumpkin. We just never saw that there was a warp spot right outside here because it was more over here where we saw previous screenshots and footage. Uh, we see some giant leaves up here. I don't know if there's any purpose if we can move those and there's something hidden underneath them or if it's just, you know, fauna decoration to make things look a bit more tropical. Uh, here we see our first ever look at the Deku Babas, right? Uh, pretty awesome to see these in the game. Uh, these ones have that blue turtle shell pattern on their head. I really like that. I think that looks really, really good in this case. Obviously, I assume these things lunge out at you like they have in all of the prior games. Some tall grass to go through, which... Uh, we can't cut the grass. We don't have a sword, but you can burn the grass down. And I'm curious if you have the echo that creates the fire, if you burn this grass down, does it take out these with it? Because these are technically plants and should be susceptible to fire. Uh, I'll be very curious to find that out when we actually get to play the game. And obviously, we get another look into the trees and how different the trees look, our palm trees and these. I don't know what kind of trees these are. Obviously, palm tree, palm tree. I don't, I, I don't know. What type of tree that is. If you guys recognize that type of tree, let me know uh, if you know or if it's just a, a new type specifically for uh, this game. And that's kind of like the end of like the new footage. We, we, we see a smidge here with some Dekus at the end. You know, the one with the mustache, the one with the curly 
top. Uh, I guess this guy's got a curly top too. I guess I guess the 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 little leaves here for the ears are kind of the unique part of this guy. This guy's got the unique top with the bite out of the leaf. And there's another Deku scrub here. And there's an item right here that I'm not quite sure what that item is, but it is there. And then there's something up here. Did we get a look at what that is up there at all? Oh, uh, for a moment. Oh, there is a female. We have a female Deku scrub up here in the left corner. Uh, pretty interesting. Probably a side quest or something related to her. Uh, and a butterfly flying around, which is pretty. Over here, we see uh, another. Gosh, what are those in the top right corner? Even more. So this, uh, okay, this must be like where the Deku scrub live. This must be like their main town based on how many there are. We see some eating that spider web cotton candy. Uh, another scrub up here. This has got, dude, this scrub's got a mohawk. Dude. Deku scrubs with mohawks are now canon. <laughs> I'm sorry. Deku scrubs with mohawks are canon. You know, we see another butterf a butterfly here too as well. It's got a little glow to it. I wonder if we'll be able to capture them. You remember how like in Twilight Princess, we could like capture bugs and stuff. I wonder if we'll be able to capture the butterflies. Uh, obviously in Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild, we could as well. Uh, but I'm curious if like, we just run into them. Uh, do we get a net item? Because it, do it does feel like we have more items. You remember on the D-pad... It only ever showed the rod on one of the direction arrows. What if there is other items that you can get later? And one of them's a net. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, and yeah, that's kind of where it fades out. I'm not seeing anything too noticeable during that fade out. Uh, pretty fun stuff. So we'll go ahead and play through this footage one more time with the sound on. And I'll give you my general thoughts on Echoes of Wisdom to date. All right, so uh, my thoughts on Echo Wisdom to date at this point are basically that I, I honestly think that Echoes of Wisdom is a really inventive game. I understand that it's borrowing worlds and elements from Breath of the Wild, and for some people that might feel a little unoriginal, but from this top-down perspective with the ability to make Echoes and Zelda doing her thing, I honestly think that this is one of, if not the better implementations of taking something that's modern but finding a new refreshing way to use it um you know this footage is just like one area and i don't even think this is showing the entire fair on wetlands like we don't see what's up there in the water right there with the pillars and stuff um you know we, we see the smoothie shop we don't see what's all the way to the left so i look i think the fair on wetlands is probably a fairly big place and they just wanted to give us teases and i think we're going to get teases like this for a lot of the areas in the game i do think the one mountainous area that we know is in the top right of the map that might they, that they might save and not even show and just let you experience it in the game but a lot of the other areas they've already shown off like the gerudo desert and stuff i fully suspect we're going to get little footage like that of this you know of those areas I, Echoes of Wisdom to me is my most anticipated game of the year. I know that sounds crazy. You know, we have things like, like uh, the Indiana Jones game coming out. Uh, and yeah, I'm pretty excited for that one. Star Wars Outlaws, I'm very excited for. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm technically, I, I technically am playing it right now, but I, I can't talk about the game outside of that because under NDA and stuff. I don't know if I'm going to drop a review of the game. But I'll probably give some opinions during a live stream or something like that. Maybe show the game off uh, right around launch on, or on Embargo Day anyways. Embargo, by the way, for reviews is September 26th. So yeah, they gave us this game super early. I don't get games from people very often, but Ubisoft has a content creators program. That's how I was able to get my hands on it. Uh, they're unique in that sense. I'm not part of a creators program for anybody else. Uh, everyone else, you just got to do like send in an email and ask. And they usually say no. <laughs> so... Hey, shout out to Ubisoft uh, for having confidence in Star Wars Outlaws and giving us it a month early. Uh, so far, so good. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, but I am very excited for uh, this game. And it, it's crazy to me that like I'm playing that game. I obviously am looking forward to, uh, you know, I'm going to play MEO here eventually. I got the demo downloaded. I plan on picking up that game. Uh, I plan on uh, getting uh, Mario Luigi Brothership and Jamboree. I'm looking forward to both of those games. Probably going to pick up Indie, if not play Indie on uh, Xbox Game Pass. Uh, I'm going to be doing Aura History of the World as well on PC. So like, I've got a lot of things that I'm, I'm actually anticipating and excited for. And eventually I got to get Wukong, right? Like it's just 
Uh, people are raving and raving and raving about Wukong. I'll probably wait till it gets discounted a bit, uh, but I'll probably end up picking that up for PC uh, just because I have a really nice, powerful PC that I, I, I hear is a better experience than on PlayStation 5. So I'll probably pick up that. But as I sit here and I think about all those games that I plan to play and try out before the end of the year, I can't help but just look at this footage over and over again of Fair on Wetlands and go, God, I'm so I'm such a Zelda nerd, guys. <laughs> like Zelda just does it for me in a way other video games don't. And I'm so glad that like this Link's Awakening remake art style that they've taken this and reused it in a brand new game rather than just Link's Awakening. Because I always felt like it looks so good in the, the Link's Awakening uh, remake that it was kind of a shame that that particular art style wasn't going to be in a brand new Zelda game. And here, lo and behold, it was going to be in a brand new Zelda game. And this game's probably, I mean, look, people think top-down Zelda games are easy to make. This game was made probably by Grezzo, right? We don't have that confirmation yet, but look, they're the ones that made the art style. Grezzo is probably the team doing this, you know, headed up by someone from Nintendo, but, but made by Grezzo. And what's really fascinating here is that game came out in 2019. There's a chance that this game's been in the works since 2019. Throw some COVID delays in, uh, and so maybe you could chop off a couple of years. But either way, you know the game's been in development for five years, which is just as long as it takes to make a big, massive 3D game. But again, I think COVID probably played a role in some of that. It's probably more like a three-year development cycle is what this probably would have been. In fact, I, I honestly think this game might have been planned to come out before Tears of the Kingdom originally when it started being made, but uh, that's all right. Look, I'm just happy that Top Down Zelda is back. I like that they're doing this unique thing with Zelda in the starring role. Uh, Link, according to the ESRB, is playable. If not, you know, maybe just at the beginning of the game, maybe towards the end of the game, maybe you get to team up and switch between them at some point midway through the game. Maybe there's like a mid-game plot twist, or maybe you just play as Zelda the entire time, and Link is just this little tiny thing you do at the beginning of the game. Uh, it, it doesn't really matter. This game looks incredible. That's all I can say is it looks utterly incredible, and I'm so glad Top Down Zelda is back, baby! And seeing these worlds from Breath of the Wild, like the Feron Wetlands, and others reimagined in a top-down style... Just makes me smile, man. These Deku scrubs, dude. The Deku scrubs look so cool. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I understand the Robo Jets from Nintendo Prime. Sorry, I gotta I gotta stop gushing over Echoes of Wisdom, man. <laughs> All right, guys. I'll catch you in the next video.